Yeah, so I'm, I'm Dan Newcomb. I'm the comms officer with uh, Acorn Farm from Penryn. And so working in a local kitchen. I've lived in Cornwall now for, this is my fourth year living here. Uh, came down as a student and now I've decided to live here just because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? So Acorn's a national organisation. Uh, started in America and then brought over here in the UK by Nick Ballard in Bristol. And it's basically it's a community organisation or an association of community organisations um, which focuses on sort of grassroots organising and building power in working class communities um, through direct action. Um, so particularly with, as it comes to housing, so tenants, it's a, you know, it's, it's a tenants and community union. Um, so it helps people who are in renting situations to deal with uh, mistreatment by landlords and letting agents um, to give power back uh, to people who are essentially powerless because of the system that we live in. Well, Acorn itself was like growing quite rapidly because of the worsening housing situation uh, across the country, really. Um, and obviously Cornwall is the sort of melting pot of it because it's the place to be, really, um, in terms of rich people buying up properties. It's, you know, it's a hot spot for second home ownership. Um, and this all just sort of boiled over to the point where people really wanted to get this kind of thing sorted out here, especially it's a student area as well, at least found with the student area. There's a lot of students living down here in this pretty bad housing situation. There's a lot of people getting mistreated by uh, landlords and letting agents. Um, and so it was just a, a sort of online, it was because it was during lockdown that this happened. So it was an online um, sort of mobilization of people that came together and decided that we need a tenants union down here. Um, and within a couple of weeks, it was set up and we were in touch with the national organizers. Um, and yeah, we were official branch in November 2020, I think it was. Well, I was actually a member of ACORN. Uh, only that summer, actually, I joined um, back home in Swindon where I'd gone home for the summer. Um, and I found out about it through a friend. Um, and I just really liked the work that they were doing. It felt like I've always been into activism. I've always been quite political, but I always felt that there wasn't really much in the way of organisation that actually got stuff done and that actually was organised. People always talked about being organised, but there was never really actually any organising apart from organising a group of people stood around speaking to a megaphone. Um, and so it was good to actually see people going out, you know, knocking on people's doors, actually talking to the community, because I think a lot of, especially on the left, there's a lot of people who, you know, claim to be... Um, fighting for the community but don't actually know their community very well and are quite detached from it and sort of are in their sort of online bubbles or in their small circles of other other you know activists and so it was nice to actually organize with people who weren't necessarily activists but just wanted to get things done in their community and that was quite quite heartwarming and also quite motivating to actually make changes. Just recently uh, one of our members um, was being um, essentially made homeless because he was giving a no-fault uh, eviction, him and his two sons um, in Penryn. And he, well, he spoke at a housing demo in Truro and we went and spoke to him and said, we're Acorn, um, we defend our members, we can help you out here and we can make sure that you're not going to get evicted. Um, and just a couple of weeks ago, uh, he was given notice by... Uh, the council that the bailiffs were going to come around and that his and that his landlord would be evicting him and so we mobilized uh, a lot of people we had a eviction resistance training because uh, this is something that acorn does quite a lot um, is physically resisting eviction so when a bailiff turns up um, there'll be a group of 20 or so people stood there arms linked wearing red shirts um, acting as a physical barrier to stop people getting made homeless and that's what we did in Penryn, and it's and it worked we got we mobilised about 20 people from the local area. There was families, there was older people, younger people, um, people from all walks of life, really. Um, but in the end of the day, were all people that lived in the local area, um, which was just, again, really encouraging and nice that people would actually come together to defend just another member of their community who they didn't know two weeks ago. Um, but after finding out about their situation, were willing to essentially fight for them and ended up actually being a fight in the end. Uh, not that we wanted that, um, but yeah, that was that's to me the clearest example of community organising and community defence and community solidarity as well. Oh, dude, why are you grab? You've got your hand on him. I can clearly it. see that. You've got, got it on camera. Oh, me, well, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, what, are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? That's assault, mate. That is assault. What are you doing? 
police, why are you allowing that to go on? You can this see what illegal. he's doing. We've got a lawful order. You can see what he's doing. Illegal. He's assaulting. They're not allowed is to use lawful? force like that. That is not lawful. Is this lawful? Is this lawful? Is this lawful? Is this lawful? Is this They're not allowed to use force like that. Activity. You're not allowed to use force like that. We are. We are. We are allowed to use force. Whoa. You're breaking the gate. The landlord's giving us permission. It's fine. Oh. What you Jesus Christ. <laughs> Watch out. What are you talking about, man? This is ridiculous. Why are you letting this to go on? Why are you allowing this to happen? You know they're not allowed to use force like that. That's assault. You know that you know they're not allowed to do that. You're the police, you're supposed to stop people assaulting people. You've seen they've just assaulted people. Hello, excuse me. He's hurt. He's hurt. Please, what's this? What's this? Yeah. Look at his Look, He needs help. You've just let them assault him like that. I'm just keeping an eye on this one, making sure it doesn't go off. Keeping an eye on the bailiffs, you mean? No, nobody's using forces. We're not hurting anyone at all. Well, we'd been told, you know, by the National Acorn organisers that normally these situations end up being. Um, we're in bigger cities, it's normally that the bailiffs turn up, they see a group of 20 people stood there, linked arms, you know, just silently, just saying, you're not going to get past us. Um, and normally that's enough for them to sort of not bother and to call it off, leave it for another day, because it's not really worth their time to, you know, get into a scrap with 20 people on someone's doorstep. Uh, it doesn't really look good for them as well. Um, but what we didn't expect and what happened with this case is that um, the bailiffs turned up, saw all of us, there was a bit of negotiation. The police turned up with them as well, which I thought was quite strange. I didn't think that police dealt with civil cases, I thought they were there for criminal cases only. Um, quite a heavy police presence as well, especially considering this is Cornwall and there's not a huge police presence here anyway. Um, and we negotiated with them, they left and we thought that might be the end of it. We thought, we thought we'd stick around a bit longer because they might come back. And our numbers dwindled a bit. Um, more vulnerable people left, so older people left, children left, journalists left, quite key as well. Um, there was about eight of us left, uh, and the police drove past again and were essentially spotting for the bailiffs and tipped the bailiffs off that there wasn't that many of us left and they could probably have another go at it. And this time there was no negotiation, there was only physical force, and we, you know, there's footage online of us being thrown, wrestled, you know wooden gate torn off the hinge and stuff that, you, you know, sounds like it's from, you know, a, some sort of dramat dramatization of, of activism. It doesn't sound like something that actually happens, you know, especially on a doorstep, like in a quiet street in Penryn. Um, and it was shocking, you know, it was, people got hurt. There was a few injuries on the day. Um, we still managed to hold our ground and we still managed to retreat back to the front door where eventually um, the police told them to back off but the police the entire time were colluding with the bailiffs and watching basically as they assaulted us to get to the front door um, which was really felt really um, made you feel very powerless to s sit there and watch it and to stand there and watch as you're being you know thrown around and people who are supposed to protect you stood there watching and telling you that they're there to their yeah, exact words were, we're here to make sure there's no breach of the peace. And I don't know how us standing there with our arms linked and then being physically ripped from each other and thrown to the floor is not a breach of the peace by the bailiffs. But um, And we were also under the impression that bailiffs couldn't use that kind of physical force, uh, especially county court bailiffs, you know, high court bailiff maybe, but we were under the impression that that wasn't reasonable force. Reasonable force to us was forcing your way through a doorway, not forcing your way through a group of people. Um, so that's what it looked like in reality, which we weren't expecting at all, but yeah, it's, it was quite daunting, really. And what was the outcome? Of well, the outcome, as we said, um, as I said, sorry, is that um, <coughs> eventually the police called off the bailiffs and they didn't come back for the rest of the day. We remobilized again. There was about, we got back to about 12, 15 people, um, sort of regrouped, had some food. <laughs> <laughs> so braved it in the rain for a bit longer, stayed there until about five o'clock-ish and we thought their work day would probably end um, and then called it a day and 
and then that was it. There was no eviction that day. They would have to give another two weeks notice for them to come back, which they didn't do. Um, and within a couple of weeks, uh, our member uh, found another place to rent um, in Truro. So that was, yeah, it worked really. And that was the most gratifying thing afterwards, you know, after the kind of the shock and awe of sort of physical violence of it unsettled, um, it was, you could finally feel proud that you actually won. I think that was the main thing is that we felt like we'd actually won um, against a system bigger than ourselves as well, against, you know, what you think is un an unbeatable sort of entity of, you know, private landlords or the state or the police, whatever. So, yeah, that was quite a new feeling and also a really, really good feeling. I mean, it just it just shows the extent to which it's, you know, that it's devastating people's lives and the fact that people do feel this powerless. I mean, it's ridiculous that it's been allowed to get to this point, really. It's like, you know, how can, how can a social housing situation or a housing situation in general in an area be so bad that, you know, you've got someone, a, a just normal law-abiding, rent-paying family man um, at risk of being on the street um, because of essentially profit of this private landlord or, you know, financial interest, which doesn't account for, in my opinion, a human right, which is the right to have a roof over your head. Um, and especially when the case was so simple that all he had to do was wait a little bit of time for him to sort that situation out. But this had been going on for a year. The fact that he hadn't found a place for a year um, and essentially had no sympathy, because there's, there's no sympathy when you're arguing with money. There's, it, it, you know, the, the way that people are profit, prof, like profiteering off of housing uh, removes the morality from the situation, removes the necessity of housing from the situation where it becomes null and void because it's it's commodified. And I think that's the ultimate thing where this crisis has come from. You know, people like to blame it and scapegoat it on different things. You know, students become the victim of it. Um, refugees become the victim of it. Um, but, you know, it's, we've everyone everyone really knows that it's money at the end of the day. To force people and yank people, that's assault, you know that. This is not you know that's not allowed. Why are you letting this happen? Yeah, well, I think what the, our eviction resistance proved is that I think they weren't ready for this kind of thing to happen. They weren't ready for the community to come together and organise because, you know, they, they responded with force and they responded with sort of like an iron fist to what they think, I think because they think, they know this is going to happen a lot now because this is going to be, there's so many people being evicted right now. Um, so they've got a, they're trying to stamp it out because they can see that it works. I think they can see that when communities come together and organise that that's actually going to tackle this issue because they can't fight everyone at once um, and they can't beat everyone. Um, so I think that's the way forward really. I think it's it's a mixture of grassroots community organising to prove to to those with power that they don't actually have the power and that we can very easily turn the tables if we just come together and use our strength in numbers. Um, but also this is getting the attention of the people who do actually have, you know, legislative power or, you know, power of local authority. And I think that this is reaching them because these people are now coming to us to ask to speak at our events. And they're coming to listen to what we have to say. And so it's not just about the action itself, but it's about how loud it is as well and how visible it is. Um, and so I think that's the answer really, is a loud, visible community response that focuses on not only defence, but also going on the offence as well. Um, so not just defending people when they get into those dire straits, but stamping out before that. So before someone gets evicted, we'd rather be there when their rent goes up, you know, and then stamp out then. And then we know that it's not going to get to the point where they're getting evicted. And so I think it's, it's about building power, really. I think that's what is going to be needed to tackle the housing crisis, it's building power in the community and not trusting, you know, other people to do it for us when we know where their interests lie. We're on main social media channels, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. You can contact the page and we'll, we're always there to reply. 
Um, we're a member-based union, so you join up, become a member. It's an hour's wage a month or three pound a month if you're unwaged. And sort of operates like the old trade unions where once you're a member, then we've got your back and then we'll do whatever we can to defend you. Um, we regularly meet. We are organised by national organisers. Uh, we know what we're doing. We can get training on any actions that we need to do. Uh, we know the law. Um, so yeah, you can reach out through the main channels really and we'll be there, email, anything. Um, and yeah, just join ACORN. Thank <laughs> you.